My sister wants to learn game development, so I designed 25 challenges for her to teach her game development in just 25 days. Hello there! The purpose of this is for me to find out if I like game dev. Clara has some programming experience, but none in C Sharp. She followed one or two Unity tutorials in the past, but it didn't get her very far. So we're pretty much starting from scratch here. I let her choose between one of the three engines that I would be able to help her with, and she went with Unity. We started out extremely basic, and just to illustrate how basic, this is me explaining to her how to create a square. There you go. <laughs> there you have a square. For the first day, I challenged her to make a simple ball rolling game, one time in 2D and one time in 3D. I'm teaching with a fairly hands-off approach, so I'll just leave Clara to it now, and we'll see how she does. As often as I could, I wanted to check in with my sister, see what she made, and provide some feedback. Exciting first Clara game. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, it even has a face. Yeah. Oh wait, I forgot the ju to jump with space. <laughs> okay, and now... Uh, yeah! Whoa! <laughs> From here on out, the challenges will get more and more difficult every day. So for the second day, I challenged my sister to make two games once again. I think the fact that you have to make two encourages you not to get stuck on the details too much. What Clara should learn first is how to find her way around the game engine and how to code in C Sharp. Making more than one game in a day means she gets more experience with that a lot faster. I particularly wanted her to get more familiar with the physics system of Unity because that's really at the core of a lot of things you do in the engine. So I challenged her to make the simple ball dropping game where you try to collapse a tower by dropping balls on it and she did an excellent job with this one. Clara and I are both huge fans of Outer Wilds so for the second game I challenged her to remake the spaceship movement. This is very easy to set up in Unity, the only problem is that beginners tend to overcomplicate their solutions quite a lot, so especially including the gravitational force of different planets and so on. This turned out to be too difficult, which is my fault, but it was also kind of a good thing at the same time, because the next day we came back together and fixed up the most pressing issues. And I think it turned into a pretty valuable lesson about debugging. Whatever is in the for each apparently, apparently is never called, because otherwise we would have seen some Okay, find from... game objects with tag planet. Well, let's see if you have some... Hopefully I assigned them the right tag. Oh, they're oh. untagged, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I gave my sister a little introduction to the UI system and how to make things scale correctly because that can be very frustrating to figure out on your own. The challenge for the day, make an entirely UI based game and what better game to do that than a clicker game. Clara did a fantastic job with this, even with some custom art here, a get rich button, as well as some custom art for the upgrades. It can be quite overwhelming to start with something completely new. I've realized that when I started to follow some tutorials and yeah, now I have Flappy Bird, but... I don't know how to do anything else. It's all too easy to get stuck in tutorial helm. The only and best way to learn as a beginner is to make some games on your own. That way you become a better and better problem solver and you need to be a good problem solver. That's why the only way is to grind it out and to get your hours in. I still have the Plants vs. Zombies game. Oh my god, I worked on it yesterday until like 1am. It's time to mix things up because today is the day for the big coding exam. I feel like I'm back in school again. I want to see where Clara stands because I want to move on to more important things. Ah. Ah. The only thing Clara knows so far is that she's not going to be allowed to use ChatGPT or any other AI chatbot. In order to get started, ChatGPT is an incredibly empowering resource. I agree, you'd be a fool not to use it. It's like having a personal teacher. However, it can easily develop into an over-reliance, and that's not healthy. Let's be honest, I do rely on ChatGPT a lot, and I hope I learned something 
using ChatGPT. The challenge was for her to make any high score game she wants. So this is also the first time she has a lot of freedom on her hand. She can really create whatever she wants almost. The yeah. test is on. Ah! I should have known, but of course her number one priority was to make a game that she could beat me in. Why I said it's gonna be hard to find a game where I'm like better than him is because I'm not sure in which areas I can even surpass Jonas. Like, I'm... Let's make a list. Hello! Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see green and red square. <laughs> yeah! The goal is to remember all of the green ones. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I'm at minus 110 points now. Yeah, exactly. So if you just keep guessing, of course you're gonna get a lot of minus points. The fact that Clara can make something like this entirely on her own after just nine days of working with Unity gives me a lot of confidence that we are indeed ready to move on. Because what Clara already knows is that in the final five days of this challenge, she will make her own video game, including sounds, graphics, code, everything. I want her to leave this challenge with something awesome to show for it. And we only have a couple more days left to build her up to that. Like, I have another challenge going right now, a side challenge, kind of. Like, I'm making an acrylic painting every single day. My sister loves making art, so now we're entering her domain. I want her to get a lot more comfortable with getting her art into Unity. She ended up skinning her plants with a zombies clone and turned it into candies versus robots. Here you can see her with a big grin on her face. For the next day, I just gave her a couple of tutorial links and challenged her to animate a character. Look who's in the house! Hey, it's me! I thought it would be cool to show you around in how, how a bigger Unity project looks like. One thing we do that I know a lot of people are not a big fan of, but that kind of works well enough, is to have a lot of manager objects. Basically, for everything in the game, there's a, a, manager. a manager. Instead of drawing paths on the ground, I just draw... 3D paths here, as you can see, oh. this is... Uh... Okay, you have some questions for me. Yeah, I brought some questions for you because I want to know your secrets. So how do you manage to work so focused that you don't need to work super long? Because you said you only work like six hours or something like that f per day. <clears throat> the secret is I want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> then I showed my sister how to create 2D animations in Blender because I thought that would very much fit her style. <laughs> <laughs> Blender is of course a massively complex and difficult to learn program, so she struggled with this challenge quite a bit. But she managed to get the animation over to Unity and therefore completed the challenge. For the next day, while we're at it, I challenged Clara to 3D model anything she wants, once again in Blender. It was difficult, it was painful, but she managed to do it. But I just realized that um, it's actually a tutorial series with like... Yeah... With 14 parts. Bad news, you can't learn Blender in a day. The next day I showed her how to do it with better topology, how to unwrap the book and how to texture it. And her only goal for the day was essentially to replicate what I've already shown her. If you've never used Blender before, that's more than difficult enough. This is what she made, mission successful. I kinda want Clara to dabble with everything a little bit, so I made her learn the basics of shader graph. The wavy thing is not really... What I came up with, it's a little bit too complicated for me, but I really like the look on the book. Also, I made a glow in here. This is the end of my time here, um, in the same house as my brother. Let's see what he says. Oh, he's not there anymore. <laughs> Today is the last day where I actually learned something new and as always Jonas likes to give me all tutorials he made. <laughs> There's a really interesting challenge for today, like a tower that collapses with wooden and stony blocks and they make like click clack sounds.
I think Clara is now sufficiently equipped to make a small but complete video game. She will now have three days to come up with three prototypes and then another five days to turn one of them into a complete game. Hello! I slept pretty bad tonight, <laughs> so I started just later today. It's already midday, after midday, but I'll work on it probably six hours, give my best, because I have my energy back now and <laughs> yeah, let's see. Let's see what I make. A long day of game dev is over. I'm pretty happy with the result. I was very addicted and didn't program that much anymore. <laughs> The ice cream cone game is not off my mind yet. You're holding the ice cone and they fall like balls that you have to catch. Like you also have to balance it, you know? And Jonas knows I'm not the best at making quick decisions. Noise. This is the one prototype Clara didn't even dare to show me because she did not manage to make it feel the way she wanted to. Yesterday I kept thinking really hard about what to do today because yesterday I just wasn't very happy with the idea I chose. So... I spent that extra time on brainstorming. In some games, I really like this discovery moment or this kind of randomness, like when you uncover a new um, area. It was time to make a choice and to talk strategy. This is the treasure card here on the right side. And I am this diamond shi shaped player icon here. And uncover the map and I have to look. I can also rotate my treasure map. So the red dot ah, marks where the treasure so is buried. So don't, also don't know how it's rotated. Yeah, I see what you mean. It would would make for a, could probably make for a full on roguelike if you wanted to, where after each level you choose a new item or something. Yeah, or an yeah an upgrade. Like now your side radius is two instead of one or something. So what's a little bit risky about this prototype is that it's you know it, it's not quite fun yet. You have this grandpa here. And I have to wait for the gangster cars to pass. These cars are coming pretty quickly at me and I'm very, very slow. So there are these um, spaces where I'm safe, obviously. But you also have an escape mechanic. You can take a small leap. But if you do that, then you're basically stunned for half a second. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't know what I would add a lot more here in this game. Nothing. Just that, that's, the, that's the entire point. You, you don't have time to add anything, Clara. You don't believe me. You don't have that much time. This is not a major deciding factor, but I think also this would probably look uh, better in a video. Also, this idea I think allows you to um, focus more more on the poli more on the polishing Sorry. and less on the gameplay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good. Yeah, I mean, probably um, that is. I think true. the more I think the more I think about it, the more I'm like, um, I would probably recommend you go with this one. But mm -hmm. I'll obviously still leave it up to you which one you want to go with. The pressure was on and as my sister tends to do, she had very high expectations for herself. Going into it, she thought that five days would be plenty, plenty of time to do almost anything she wants. But reality quickly caught up with her as she got stuck on a major bug that caused her to completely halt progress. Three and a half hours now and I failed. No worries. Like, that's why I, that's why I um, gave you the advice to go with the easier, safer option for a game, because these things are very normal to happen. So yeah, basically the problem that I have is that I wanted to restart my scene after every run. So like also oh, the only pro the only problem is that these three references are lost. That's the only problem. Yeah, I know. I always have the problems with the references. You mean here? So what? Yeah, what do you want the game manager to do? Needless to say, I tried my best to pull her out of the swamp and rekindle her spirit a little bit, cause she was down. So maybe you heard uh, that evening in my voice that was yeah. breaking a little. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little bit <laughs> desperate. I don't know. So a little bit disappointed that I spent so much time on this high school thing yeah, yeah okay. nice. i realized already that <laughs> i have a lot of things on my to-do list also yes. for the next days so here we are again on the next day and i thought before i make my own grandpa character just yet again i will test out of the old grandpa from my other project if i can transfer this to the new one so that this work is not in vain. And if I run out of time, if it takes a lot of time to make this work, then at least I have a decent model to work with. Starting with technical things already today, but um, I took a little bit of a break this, um, this morning, so I guess I'll feel fit enough to continue now. I only have three days left and I really have to get going now because 
um, the art style has to get done today, basically. I gave my sister the advice to go with an unlit, cartoony, flat-shaded style. Firstly, because she was really starting to run out of time, and secondly, because she wanted it to blend with a 2D character in the foreground. Starting the gameplay took a bit longer than expected, but it was finally time for Clara to get to the visuals of the game. Watching all of the footage that my sister sent me now, I have to say, I'm very proud to see her apply all of the things that I've taught her just a couple of days ago. She was very tired and the project took a big toll on her, but her creative passion was back online. So I'm glad I'm done with the cars now. Now is um, the pavement and stuff like that. <laughs> Watching my sister at work now, you could tell me that she's been doing game design for 20 years and I, I would probably believe it. Obviously she's a good artist, but to think that she's only been using Unity for like 20 days now? Come on, it's unbelievable. I've always avoided this because my brother already is a great game designer so I felt like this path I, I cannot take it anymore because um, I have s so someone close to me that's just so good at it. But that someone can also help guide you and provide you with feedback and advice that otherwise you wouldn't have access to. I do understand everyone who wants to find their own path in life, but following a path that somebody you know took before you is not a disadvantage. That's an advantage that allows you to catch up much faster if you want to. Probably go to something bluish and or purple. I feel like worked pretty well with them. Yeah, because I made the grandpa quite light because I thought I would yep. have a darkish background. So I would, yeah, I would make a darkish background. Oftentimes you feel like, yeah, I have to stand out, kind of. I have to be different than my siblings as well. So probably not an easy path if I wanted to take it. I had a couple more good tips for my sister, and I think she was starting to surprise herself with what she was capable of. Better colors for the cars would also be a huge, huge upgrade. My favorite thing actually was just every day learning something completely new and at the end seeing some results um, that I couldn't have fathomed would be possible for me to achieve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it's always very rewarding in the beginning when you're learning something because you always just like so huge steps every single day and yeah, it was very, very fun. Oh. Nice. Oh. With some voice acting from your husband. Yeah. <laughs> I voice acted myself at first, but I, did, I just don't sound like a grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh, the gangster cars even make a sound? or? Yeah, they okay. make a, a, a different car sound um, additionally. Like the other cars don't make car oh. sounds, that's just the car ambient. So do you use the dash sometimes? Sometimes but very sparingly. Yeah, same I for me, but sometimes it's useful, right? Sometimes it saves your life and then it looks very appropriate with the animation and everything. <laughs> <laughs> this has been one of the most moving videos I think I've ever made for me personally, and I'm struggling to put into words why. It's probably just awesome to share my passion with someone I really care about. Do you think you will keep making games or do you think you'll move on to other experiments? Um, I'm actually not sure yet, but um, <laughs> I'm still very unsure about my future. I think a lot of people in this situation are so afraid of climbing the wrong mountain that they end up not climbing any mountain at all. You know what? I think meaning can't be found on top of a mountain, especially not nowadays where we're building machines that can climb mountains way, 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 way faster than any of us will ever be able to. I believe that meaning is derived more from how you go and not so much from where you go. You're hiking and hiking and hiking. People are overtaking you. A couple of robots just surpassed you as well. But you just keep walking at a steady pace with your head up and a big grin on your face because there's so much enjoyable, lovely roads still ahead of you. I can show you the paths I've been on, but you can also find your own. Enjoy your hike, Clara.